Tech Tuesday, solely tipping the ratio of news and sarcastic comments in favor of the sarcastic comments. I'm Liam Spore. Number five. Since most of you aren't lucky enough to have a full-size desk to put all your computer junk on, or maybe you're just one of those people who doesn't really understand what a graphics card does, regardless, there's a solution for your need of more screen space. The Double Sight Mini USB Monitor is just what the name hints, a mini monitor that uses only USB for both video and power. That means no need for a special graphics card or weird adapters. They're available in seven or nine inch sizes and run at a resolution of 800 by 480 at 120 bucks or 140 bucks respectively. Since they are only one plug, they are perfect for portable use, small desks, or for getting an extra screen to put your homework on while projecting Call of Duty on your 20 inch HD screen. Number four, Apple comes in somewhere other than number one. That's not actually the story, by the way. The Apple tablet rumors have returned and more solid than ever. An announcement date of January 19th, 2010 is rumored to be the big day that Apple will drop a 10.7 inch iPhone OS enabled touch tablet with options for Wi-Fi or 3G and Wi-Fi. If announced, the guess is that it will be available in May or June in line with Macworld 2010. There's a 20% chance, however, that Steve Jobs will kill the tablet because it's not quite right, much like the iPod Touch fiasco. There's also a 100% chance that I'm completely sick of hearing about Apple tablet rumors and writing stories about them. But then there's like a 50% chance that I'm still gonna tell you about them anyway. And there's a 0% chance that I will be able to afford the Apple tablet if it ever does come out. Numbers make me sad. Number three, the Asus eBox seems like the perfect rumor come to life. This mini desktop PC is built with media server in mind. This thing is not the most powerful box ever, but touts a DVD drive, six USB ports, SD card slot, eSATA connection, Ethernet, VGA, and HDMI out with 5.1 audio. Perfect for hooking up a few hard drives and streaming to an HD TV. The guts are good for a box small enough to mount to the back of a TV with Windows 7, four gigs of RAM, 250 gigs hard drive, an Nvidia Ion chip, and dual Atom 330s. At 400 bucks, it's a bit costly, but when you spend a few thousand on a TV and Blu-ray, what's the big deal? Number two. The PSP Go comes yelling its mobility back into the countdown. This thing just can't decide what it is. The Go lacks a UMD drive, so it's not really a replacement to the PSP 3000, but it's not a new interface and still doesn't have the freaking second analog stick that makes playing, well, any shooter actually playable. It does carry 16 gigs of internal storage and space for, surprise, surprise, a Sony exclusive memory stick thingy. That is not the old one, of course, so you're gonna need to buy new ones if you're upgrading from a PSP. The screen is smaller than previous PSPs, but the sliding feature and overall smaller body makes it far more portable than the old ones. But the body upgrade does not really match the internal one, seeing as the guts remain almost the same as the last PSPs and still uses an annoying and clunky interface. To get a full review, head over to CNET or Gizmodo. To get someone to agree with you on the frustration of the lack of second analog stick, simply talk to anybody who's ever tried to play a shooter on PSP. Number one. The Dell Latitude Z is not marketed at anyone I'm broadcasting to right now. It's a super thin, super light, yet fully sized 16 inch laptop that offers power and some cool features. At $2,000 for an ultra portable, this thing is meant to be carried alongside a suit and a briefcase and used to show off at meetings. The biggest deal with the Z is its new wireless charging. No, Dell is not shooting energy across your office to charge up the Z, but instead, for only another 200 extra dollars, you get a little stand thing that connects to points on the base of the laptop to connect power, video out, and USB. This feature is nice, but also a little bit gimmicky, as plugging in the power cord has never really stopped an executive from finding the next pet rock idea. Although you won't trip over the power cord, it wouldn't really matter, seeing as you will have to cut off an arm and two legs to pay for this thing. When the wheels come down. That's all for this week. Don't forget to check out Tech Tuesday on YouTube and Facebook. And on top of that, you can now send in your own tech news. If you see something out there that you really want to get featured on the show, send a link to me at nhtechtuesday at gmail.com. Maybe if it's cool and I can think of a clever comment to make on it, it will end up on the show. Yes, this is all just a thinly veiled way to be lazy and still get my stories done.